We've received the most beautiful shipment of goods all the way from St. Louis. I've just piled some down there at the end of the counter. Why don't you go help yourself and I'll be with you in just one moment. Thank you, Mr. Kendall. I suppose you want to sell your little bundle of pinion wood, eh, hey, boy? Yes, sir. Fifty cents. That's all it's worth. Did you bring a list? Very good. I'll take care of this now. You go away and come back later. What do you want, boy? Sir, my mother is going to have a baby, and she needs you to come. Please, as soon as you can. Listen, boy, I have the people of this village to take care of. Besides, uh, that's too far. Well, that climb is dangerous. And who'd take care of all the people in this village if anything happened to me? What must I do, doctor? If my mother needs you badly, when it is time for the baby. That old Mexican woman, she'll know what to do. No, I'm sorry, boy. I have another call to make before supper.
Well, what did you have, cowboy? You must be hungry in a coyote if you rode over the pass in this weather. I am for sure, ma'am, and I'm pretty near froze. Yeah, well, this freezing weather's got about everybody in these parts. <laughs> yeah, I reckon it has. Well, why don't you sit down there by the stove and I'll rustle you up some vegetables. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Well, I just followed that big old mountain in the north and it led me right here. Yeah, well, that big old mountain in the north is called Christmas Mountain. And it's called that because some old Spaniard discovered it on Christmas Day over 200 years ago. Is that a fact? Mm -hmm. Well, it's sure nice finding some white folks. There's nothing but Mexicans and Indians south of here. Oh, I know what you mean. It's awful trying to keep those foreigners out, especially since the whole country was owned by Mexicans and Indians, you know, for a while. But we do our best. Well, good for you. Well, enough of this, John. Now, what do you have? Anything you can fix, I'm going to eat. Oh? I uh, suppose we start out with a uh, big, thick steak, some red pinto beans with chili, mound of fried potatoes, a uh, little boiled squash and onions, plate of hot biscuits, followed by a wedge of home-baked apple pie big enough to choke a horse. I think I just died and went to heaven. <laughs> Yeah, ain't gonna be much of a Christmas around here if this cold spell don't break. Must be awful hard on the livestock. Oh, about wiped out. It's a doggone crisis, that's what it is. Pretty. Mm -hmm. well, to put that on the table, will you, and then get out and clean up the kitchen. Well, now, how about some more, cowboy? Mm -hmm. No thanks, ma'am. I'm too tired and full right now to lift a fork. <laughs> but say, do uh, you know where I could rent a good room for the night? Well, how long are you going to be in town? Oh, well, it depends. A uh, month or so, most likely. Oh. What kind of business you in, mister? The cow business. Oh. Well, it just so happens we have a couple of fine rooms upstairs. Two dollars a day room and board. Fine. Just uh, put this here on my bill and I'll settle up with you at the end of the week. We don't do business on credit here in Lobos, cowboy. Now, your bill's a dollar forty, room and board, payable in advance, two dollars a day. Well, I aim to pay you as soon as I get some kind of employment. But I'm as strong as an ox. I can haul water, chop wood, or shoot game from a keep. I, I said I'd pay you. Come on, come on. Stepping on him, Luther. He's right there. Oh. Looks like he's been run over by a wagon. I threw a barrel at him because he ate a mound of vittles he didn't have the money to pay for. He's a thief and I want him locked up. It's a few days till Christmas, Flora. Where's your charity? Oh. Even a cowboy worth a plug nickel. Or a Texan worth a hill of beans. Come on, Skeeter. Give me your hand, please. my burro Pepe. I have no use for donkeys or burros. Besides, yours is evil-tempered. There is no market for such animals. But because I, I, I feel sorry for your poor mother, I'll give you five dollars. You can take it out in merchandise.
goodbye, Pepe. Did you see that shepherd kid today? Yes. I gave him a good price for his worthless donkey. Well, it is almost Christmas. It won't be much of a Christmas if this cold spell don't break. God works in wondrous ways his miracles to perform. Mm -hmm. I think someone should do something wondrous for that poor shepherd family up on Christmas Mountain. A woman being a widow and all and having a baby soon. Well, they should go back to where they came from, if you ask me. Well, they can't hardly go nowhere till that baby's born. Both of those poor women losing their husbands in that avalanche last year, my prayers go with them. If you ask me, I think we should put together a goodwill Christmas package for them poor folks. Why? Because it's Christmas, Findlay, that's why. It would be a worthy, charitable gesture. Well, uh, what would we put in it? Uh, old clothes and things that we don't use or need anymore? Yeah, and some day old bread. Those folks lead anything, I expect. But who's going to take it up there? Since you got the best horse in town, Sheriff, why don't you go up to the mountain? And who would patrol this valley if my horse slipped on that icy mountain path and broke a leg or something? Two bits. Well, can't any of you make the sacrifice? <sighs> After all, bread cast upon the waters returneth a hundredfold. Why don't you do it, Reverend? You're the natural choice. <clears throat> well, I uh, naturally would like to do it, but I have to prepare for the Christmas service, and I have to direct the children's pageant, and uh, what about you, Brother Findlay? Oh, if I locked up the store for a day, I'd be out of business. <laughs> Flora. Oh, it's too tough a trip for a woman to take. Besides, I'm in the same shape Finley is. <coughs> Say, how about the cowboy? Why don't we chip in and pay back what he owes to Flora and send the cowboy up to the mountain? <laughs> you mean he goes up there or he stays in jail over Christmas? <laughs> I don't cotton to pay another folks' debt. Uh, that's against my principle. Uh, again. Yeah, for heaven's uh, sake. After all, it is Christmas. That is no excuse for doing something foolish. Oh, 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 goat. Finley. Please, Brother Finley. Please. Very well, Reverend. I'll contribute two bits and not a penny more. Mm. Oh. Then it's settled. We'll send the cowboy. When do you want me to leave? No. All I have to do is just go up there and I can clear out this godforsaken country. That's right. The sooner you're out of my town, the better. That suits me just fine.
Entendu Thank you. Listen, ma'am, this wasn't my idea. Now, why do you come? Well, them townspeople let me out of the pokey so they'd come up here. Pokey? What's pokey? It's a jailhouse, ma'am. Oh, la carcel. Did the doctor say he was coming before the baby arrived? That doctor and none of them towns folks are going no place outside of the range of the dinner bell. Oh, Lupe. No, it's important. Pero Teresa, ¿qué estas garras y los trajo zapatos viejos? Pero esa porquería, devuélvelas. Mira, botes viejos, yo no sé para qué. Why they do this? It's for Christmas. It's to make them feel good. By doing this, make them feel good? Well, I don't rightly know, ma'am. Has something to do with the Bible, I reckon. Give to the poor and the less fortunate and such. But we not what you say, poor. Well, you ain't exactly rich, neither. Please, uh, you may eat with us. We have good food. No, thanks, but I do need a place to bed down for the night. I'll be leaving at sunup. You can sleep here. I'm a cowman. I don't sleep in sheep folks' cabins. But if it's all right, I'll just bed down out there in the shed. <laughs> you will preach to death in that shed. Maybe, but I got no other choice. Listen, ladies, I can't much blame you for being a little out of sorts over them hand-me-downs. But like I said, them townspeople just wanted to make themselves feel good at Christmas time. The truth is, they couldn't care less whether y'all lived or died. Well, thanks for the coffee. Good night. Que vaya el diablo. Pobre hombre. Tendrá mucho frío. It's his own fault, Teresa, if he's frosted by morning. We make our own destiny in this life. But all the creatures in this world, men are the most stupid. They'd rather die if they don't have their will. He is not bad, this one. Ay, Teresa, you're innocent. Do you know that life is like a... Like this water job. What you put in, that's what you get out of it. If you don't put nothing, you get nothing. But if you put love and kindness and friendship, that's what you get out of it. What you got here? It's a stew. It's Basque.
Tell me. How come you speak good English when everybody else around here speaks foreign? I was born here. No. Uh, what's in this here bass stew? Lamb, vegetables. I don't eat mutton, boy. Why? Cowmen don't like sheep. Why? Because cows and sheep don't mix, that's why. If a cow goes near grass where a sheep's been, won't eat it. That's not true. It is so true. And sheep graze on land, it ought to be for cattle. Cowmen have had to drive sheep herders off their land ever since I can remember. I know that they get along fine together. You do, huh? How come you know that? My mother told me that in our country she saw cows and sheep eating peacefully together. Oh, she told you that, did she? My mother has seen them. She has, huh? Yes, and my mother does not lie. Yeah, well, you get to bed before you catch your death of cold out here. What's it like to be a cowboy? Cowboying's a good life, but it's a rough one. But if you don't own your own cows, you can't make no money at it. Now, you get to bed. Yes, sir. Will you have Christmas with your family? I ain't got no family. With your friends? Boy, you got more questions than a dog has fleas. I ain't got no friends, neither. Well, I had a friend once, but he died on me. Got himself killed in a stampede about a year back. No, I ain't got nobody. And that's the way I like it. I'm sorry. Well, there ain't no cause for you to be sorry. As soon as it's daylight, I'm clearing out of this godforsaken sheep country. And you get to bed. I'm going to meet myself getting up. I'll leave the stew. Good night. There is a blanket in the sled. Doggone stew, I'm liable to kick it over in the night and spill it all over me. Mother Mary, bless Lupe and Mama, and be with her when it is time for the baby. And blessed Mother, I pray the baby will be perfect, as you are perfect, and that Mama will not be in too much pain or afraid. Bless Pepe. I pray that he is being fed well and that he does not miss me too much. And I pray for this stranger. Please, give him a vision that he may see something good in the world and know that he was not alone. Amen. saying this, but I thought you was... Rode across the Great Divide? <laughs> yeah. I was even at your bearing. I uh, hope you don't mind if we change the subject. <laughs> you know, I got a proposition I want to talk over with you. All right. Shoot. in your halo. Oh, uh, 
I ain't got all my equipment yet. That's what I want to talk to you about. Then you ain't exactly an angel, right? Well, I'm an angel, all right, but on a kind of a low, unofficial sort of level. You might say I'm a tenderfoot angel. You see, I never had enough points to get me a complete outfit, so I'm doomed to just wander around down here till I can make something real good happen. Well, I'd sure like to help you, Murph, but I'm in kind of a fix myself right now. Yeah, I know. You got even worse marks than I have. Boy, I'd work on that, too, if I was you. You know, I drank a lot and, and cussed when I was down here, but I never stole no money off of nobody. You know about that, do you? Yeah. You took them cows from old man Willis, and then you went and sold them and took the money and buried it in a coffee can down near Goliath, told him that you was robbed. Why, you know you get almost as bad a marks for lying as you do stealing. All right, Murph. You got me. You got me dead to rights. And you just tell me what you want me to do, and I'll do it. If I was you, I'd start in right here and now with them nice people that you've been so doggone ugly to. You know, if it wasn't for that little old kid, you might not have got this chance at all. How do you mean? Do you know he said a prayer for you tonight? He did. Yeah, and children's prayers are mighty powerful medicine up yonder. Why, they get action real quick. That's why I'm here. Well, good luck, boy. I'll probably be dropping in on you from time to time. Murph, before you go, tell me something. Have I got a chance? Of course, you got a chance. Uh, I mean, if you didn't have, why, I wouldn't be here. But it's sure going to be an uphill climb all the way. And you better give it your best shot. I will. I will. And, Murph, one more thing. What's the other place like? Well, now, I don't truly know. But I'm beginning to believe that it's just being on the outside looking in. Not really belonging anywhere. Anywhere at all. no se ha ido todavía. Está bueno que te le pongas dura. Dile que ya se vaya, que nos deje en paz. No le tengo confianza, ¿eh? ¿Cómo lo vamos a tratar bien? O sea, es un hombre malo y trae armas y todo. Yo no sé de dónde viene. Y tenemos niños aquí en la casa. ¿Y tú cómo estás? No, yo no quiero que esté aquí. Hey, Julio, come on over here and give me a hand, boy. We're wasting daylight. Come on. All right, come over here and I'll load you up. Here you go. Can you carry that? Yeah. Wake up. Don't go to sleep. You're not going to take that into your mama. Hurry up. Está quebrando leña y parece que se va a quedar aquí. Tenemos que tener cuidado. Estamos solas aquí. Excuse me for not introducing myself yesterday. Uh, my name is Gabe Sweet. Well, I am Teresa. Pleased to meet you. 
Lupe. 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 Uh, if it's all right with you folks, I'd like to spend another day up here and see if I can be of some help to you. That is very kind. Oh. Uh, hey, partner. Uh, that was mighty good of you to bring me that stew last night. It sure was good. And that, that blanket, that just kept me as snug as a raccoon in a holler log. <laughs> you will have uh, the, the breakfast with us, no? Well, I'd, I'd like to, ma'am, but uh, I don't want to put you all out none. That'll be enough. Sit down. Well, you tell me something. Is there any game in these parts? Oh, yes. Elf, here, even bear. Well, tell me this. Is there any feathered creatures? I mean, like uh, wild turkeys and such. Oh, yes. Hey, what if you and me go hunting today? How'd you like that? That is, if it's all right with your mama. <laughs> as soon as we get some breakfast, we're going to take off. You sure you know where these turkeys are? Yes, sir. Here you go. Up you go. some fine-looking country in Texas, but I sure ain't never seen nothing like this. It's pretty in the summertime, too. I sure bet it is. Be good for grazing cows. Yeah, cows and sheep, too. <laughs> Yeah. Why do you carry a pistol? Uh, cowmen always carry a pistol, boy. Always have. Why? Why? Well, in case they need it, they have it. That's why. Well, why would they need it? Oh, uh, in case somebody jumps you, tries to steal your cows, rustlers or somebody, you're ready for them. Have you ever had to shoot a rustler or anybody? Well, no. No, I never had no call to, but I was always ready for him if I did. Have you shot anything with your pistol? Well, sure I have. What? Well, uh, jackrabbits, uh, fence posts, tin cans, you know, just for practice, just to stay on the ready. In case somebody jumps you, right? Well, you doggone right. My father never wore a pistol. Well, of course he didn't. That's because he's a sheep man. Now, it's one thing to steal a cow, but who in thunder would want to steal a sheep? <laughs> <laughs>
ourselves a turkey, and he's the real hunter. He led us right to him. Lupe, Lupe. Yes, sir. Ay, Julio, pero qué turkey tan gordo. Vamos a tener una comida para Christmas de lo mejor. Eh, ay, ay, ay. Teresa, ahorita lo voy a cocinar, eh. No, quito nada, quito nada. Gabe, will you stay for Christmas with us? Well, I, I don't know. I... A good Ginalda? Ah, you. It would give us much pleasure. Well, I sure appreciate it. Uh, who knows? Maybe that new baby will show up for Christmas time. I sure wouldn't want to miss that. <laughs> If you folks don't mind, I'd kind of like to bed down in here by the fire tonight. It's uh, kind of spooky out there in the shed. It's cold, too. You sure had a nice time today, didn't you, son? Yeah. But I reckon I don't have to tell you about that, do I? No, you don't. Uh, them, uh, them sheep folks are pretty nice once you get to know them. <laughs> Who said they couldn't teach an old dog new tricks? <laughs> kind of be quiet, Murph. You don't want to wake nobody up. Oh, shoot. They can't hear me, only you can. How come? Well, it's a kind of a spatial connection that you and me got. To. You'll understand it all later on, uh, if you ever make the grade. Well, um, how am I doing, Murph? Well, uh, a little better, ain't I? I guess you're doing all right. But, boy, you sure got a long ways to go. However, I, I believe you're just about ready for the big test. What's that? Well, them town folks down there, they ain't got the slightest notion about the spirit of Christmas. Now, I want you to go down there and kind of fill them in on it, uh, so to speak. But Murph, I'm just getting the hang of this thing myself. What'll I say to them? Look, boy, doing is a lot better than saying. Now, don't you worry about it at all. When the time comes, I'll be 
right behind your back and yell. Well, you gotta promise me, Murph. I mean, you gotta promise me. Boy, angels don't never lie. Not even low grade ones. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. It's just that this is all kind of new to me. Yeah, I know, I know, boy. I sure am. I wish he wouldn't do that. Senor, I believe Teresa's gonna have the baby any time now. Do you think you can go to the village and persuade the doctor to come? If anything goes wrong and if anything happens to Teresa and the baby and I cannot help him, I'd rather die. Now, now, nothing bad is going to happen. And I don't want no talk about dying. You've got to remember, it's Christmas. I was planning to go down the village anyhow, and I'm going to do what I can to bring that doc back with me. Oh, thank you, senor. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Sure. Señora, hablé sí. con el cabo. Yo creo que va a ir por el doctor. Ah, oh, oh, sí, bueno. Bueno, gracias, Lupe. Lupe, tráeme la madada. Sí, señor. Lupe, dile que la lleve a la iglesia. Que se la dé a la gente. Y le dé gracias de mi parte y feliz Navidad, ¿sí? ¿Pero por qué, señora? Why did you do this? They don't deserve something so grand. They only give you all rags and scrap from the table. In return, it does insults. You give them something. The only thing of value that you have. Something is... Priceless. We give what we have. Senor, the senora asked me to give you this Madonna for you to take it and give it to the people in the village. Are you leaving, Gabe? No. I'm going down to the village. I gotta take something down there for your mama. Can I come? Sure you can. It's all right with her. But we gotta get moving. There's some bad weather coming in. Now you hurry.
chili? I've never had chili before. It's good. Wasn't too hot for you? Mm-hmm. Where is everybody? The town looks plum deserted. About the church house. Christmas Eve prayer meeting. Can I take you scraps of bread, Pepe? Well, sure, but don't be too long. I want to get up the mountain before Sunday. <laughs> How'd they like all their Christmas presents? Oh, fine. They like it fine. Yeah. Well, I'm going to say a few amens over at the church. Wouldn't do you any harm to do the same, cowboy. <laughs> I ain't cut out for these kind of jobs, Murph. Have a heart, for Pete's sakes. Oh, I got a heart. It's yours we got to do something about. <laughs> Looky here. I like those people on Christmas Mountain. I honestly do. And that little old kid out there is like my own son. Why don't you tell me something I don't already know? But crying out loud, Murph. <laughs> drive a hard bargain. I've already done a bunch of stuff. I've hauled water, chopped wood, shot wild turkeys. What else do you expect me to do? Only what you promised to do. Only what you know you have to do, that's all. Well, I can't do it. I just can't. Now, look here, boy. You've done a fine job up till now, and I'm proud of you. But since it's Christmas, I want to see you grab off all the points you can get. We both need them bad. And you're going to get them for us. All right, Murph. I'll try. But you got to buck me up in case I start to get skittish. Oh, I will be. What do you think Angels is for, anyhow? That's what I come down here to tell you. Now, look, you almost got a lock on this thing, boy. Now's the time to shove in all your chips and go for the big pot. And when the time comes, why, I'm going to be right there behind you, I'm backing you up every step of the way. You got to promise now. You got to promise me. I promise. And Angels is dependable. Very dependable.
O Lord, we beseech thee on the eve of the birth of your son to have mercy upon us all. If it be thy will, let the sun shine down on us in this village and put an end to this dreadful, dreadful cold, these endless snows that have taken our livestock and killed our crops. And if this blizzard is a manifestation of thy wrath, if we have done anything to offend thee, give us a sign so that we may repent and once more receive thy warmth and thy bountiful blessings and rejoice in this season of love and goodwill among men. Amen. Amen. And now we will have a time for testimony. Who will be first? Mr. Finley. Well, I uh, gave some food to the starving Wiggins family on credit, which is definitely against my principles. I did not foreclose on the Pearson's mortgage, and I sent some flour and some baking soda to the sheep herder's widow. God bless you, Brother Finley. <clears throat> Doc Thatcher. Mm, I delivered to uh, Adam's baby and uh, said they didn't have to pay me till next spring. I gave uh, Paula Koff medicine to the Turners for free. And my wife and I gave them fine clothes to that uh, separate family. God bless you, Doc Thatcher. Flora? Huh? Well, I took in a poor Irish family, and I only charged them half price for their room and board. Well, I let that cowboy work his debt out so he could get out of jail. And I gave a lot of bread, five loaves to be exact, to those foreigners up on Christmas Mountain. God bless you, Flora. <coughs> Sheriff. There was this drunken Indian passing through town a while back, and I didn't arrest him. And I let that cowboy out of jail. God bless you, Sheriff. Oh, I, I almost forgot. I had shoes put on Farmer Perkins' horse for free. But I said he could pay me later. I fixed his plow, too. And I paid that sheep herder kid more money for his donkey than it was worth. <coughs> you yes. Eunice, what about you, dear? I did some quilting for the Logan family and gave an old dress to the shepherd's widow. Bless you, dear. And bless you, one and all. Now, if there isn't anyone else, we just have a few announcements before we close. Tonight at 7 p.m. here at the church... We'll Cold feet again, huh? Immediately following...
The ladies' auxiliary will serve a box supper. Murph? Followed by our traditional Christmas service. Where are you, Murph? I'm close by. Carols will be sung. After that, we will have our Christmas prayer service. Well, I'm scared to death. That's because you ain't never been in a church house before. Well, I can't do it, Murph. I just can't. On Christmas Day, the Vesper service will be held at 6 p.m. You gotta trust me now. So far, I ain't never let you down, now have I? Now, you just get up there and open your mouth and leave the rest to me. Where prayers will be said for the poor and less fortunate. And now, if you will all turn your hymn books to page... I uh, didn't come up here to tell you all about anything good I've done, because that'd just be a wasted trip. I come up here to, to give you all a gift from that little, that little lady up on Christmas Mountain. I want to tell you the truth. Uh, giving them folks uh, all them worn out clothes and rotten food, that didn't seem quite right to me. But um, she must have seen something in it that I didn't see, because she, she sent you all this gift, which uh, must have been very special to her. that beautiful? No. All my life, I never would have nothing to do with sheep folks or foreigners or, or anybody that wasn't of the same tribe as I was. And that's been my loss. Because I'm beginning to understand that people I didn't like was usually people I didn't take the trouble to know. Well, I know now. There ain't no finer people on this earth than them folks up there on Christmas Mountain. And that little lady is going to have a baby any time now. And she needs a doctor. And she needs good friends. And good neighbors, too. A long, long time ago, there was another little old foreign kid born way off in a strange land. And his folks was poor, too. And I reckon nobody thought that he'd ever amount to much. Well, we all know now that if it wasn't for him, there wouldn't be a Christmas at all. I'll tell you something. And it's a fact. We're going to have ourselves the best Christmas any of us ever had. I 
promise. How much? Oh, my. This saddle's seen a lot of wear and tear. You won't find a better roping saddle in this country, I can promise you that. Well, I do not have much use for roping saddles. You know, I really don't need to part with this saddle. Do you want it or not? Well, I suppose. But twenty dollars is as high as I can go. Fifty and not a penny less. Thirty-five. Forty. Sold. You know, uh, that was a good testimony you gave at the church. I don't agree with it, of course, but uh, the effort was commendable. How much to give the boy for his burrow? Well, now, that is beside the point. Profit is what business is all about. How much would it take for me to buy him back? Well, uh, with the cost of feed and board, I could let you have him for $20. You gave the boy five. I'll give you ten. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. This time of year, I never quibble. Cowboy, if you don't have a saddle. Oh, I'll get me another saddle easy enough. Don't you fret yourself none about that. Why don't you use Papa's saddle? Your Papa had a regular horse saddle? I didn't know sheep men rode on horses. Sure they do. Sheep men can do all sorts of things. Well, I'm sure beginning to find that out. Gabe? Yeah? What's in all those bundles that Pepe's carrying? I reckon you'll find out about that soon enough. Sure is nice to have Pepe back. Best thing that ever happened. Oh, Julito. Oh, qué bonita las botitas. Mira las... Ay, tengo una picture. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, how... Lupe, this for you. Oh, gracias. Thank you. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, mira. What about Shut that? Me. Now, there's something for you. Beautiful on you. But, mira, me hermoso. Yes. Color bonito. This must be it. Huh? Oh, but you look beautiful on you. Oh, Rio. A rifle. Thanks, Gabe. Get something. Well, you're the man of the house now. It's high time you put some meat on the table. Gabe, it's for you. It's from my family. thing I ever owned. Thank you, Al. I'll wear it proudly.
Good evening. I'm Doc Thatcher. May I come in? Please come in. Thank you. I heard you might be expecting a new arrival. And I thought I may be of some help. Is the house charmante? Bama. He is beautiful. What will you name him? Emmanuel. He's a little bit. Ba. <laughs> Manuel. Sounds appropriate. Very appropriate indeed. Shadows put to fly. 
Brother Finley. Okay, kids. Here you go. <laughs> It's a fine, fine thing to do. your daddy's saddle, I'll be on my way. Gabe, you are, you are welcome here, always. We can use it for the men in Esta Casita. Well, I might just take you up on that one day soon, but 
Right now, I've got some unfinished business back in Texas, and I better be moving on. You will come back. Well, there's not many places I ever wanted to come back to, and hardly anyone I've ever wanted to see again, but yeah, I'd be mighty pleased to see you all again. Mighty pleased. I'm Gary Asira. Ma'am? Oh, you are an um, angel. <laughs> oh, no, ma'am. Not just yet, but I'm working on it. Vaya con Dios. Merry Christmas! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so long, Murph. And Merry Christmas to you, too.